Hey guys, welcome to this video and I want to say why do I study math even though I most likely won't be using it at all in my job for the next foreseeable future, the next few years. Um, so here, here's four reasons. There's there's a lot more, but I thought I might make this video short. Don't want to waste you guys' time. So number one, I do science to show initiative. I know science and mathematician is kind of different because uh, math is one of those non-physical based sciences. Physics is the beginning of physical material sciences and then it goes to chemistry and biology and up. Math is more logic based, it's more mental than than any actual experiments that are you can do with the tangible things. There's no things involved, calculator is tangible, but the idea is mental. So, uh, but the, I do math because it's the most accessible. I, I have physical injuries, I can't really go to university. Um, even though I do have the funds to go to university if I really wanted to, it's not cheap, but I could, I could manage. Um, and I wanted to um, be really walking my talk. I constantly say, hey, I value science. I respect scientists. We need more science, 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 technology, business. Like if you if you watch my recent videos, I constantly talk, talk about these three things, science, technology, and business, and medical technology, entertainment technology, and all these other things, and a little bit of politics. But main three things I always talk about, science, technology, business, engineering, and entrepreneurship, and all those things. So science, technology, and business. So I always talk about it, but I don't show initiative. So I thought, and I actually did do web development before. So that is science, I guess, computer technology, but um, I don't really like programming right now because it's changed too fast. And the way that I am uh, organize my life is I have a lot of trouble learning a lot of technical things fast. And all the, all the coding knowledge that I learned right now is kind of disappearing pretty quickly. It's getting obsolete. I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised if in five to six years, uh, computer programming would be not what it is today. If you look at the AI coding, I, I don't check anymore because I don't program right now, but AI is kind of taking over software engineering, and there will come a point in time, the next 10, 15 years, where we can just say, hey, chat GPT or, you know, uh, Copilot, hey, make an app that does this and this and this, and it basically does it for you. No one has to manually code anymore. So there was a machine, there was numbers, then there was machine learning code, then Charles Babbage made the first general purpose computer, and then there's like the, um, uh, I can't remember the name, the first uh, programmer, the, the lady, um, uh, Nvidia named one of the chips after her. Um, I, I can't. I, I can. The first programmer in the world, the first computer, pro, the first programmer was in the world was a lady. Um, uh, I'll look it up later. But she she was. Uh, and then we had Fortran, machine learning code, machine code, then base level code and high level code like JavaScript, PHP, um, all these you know web development and like Python, Ruby, um, and then we had frameworks like uh, 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 Ruby on Rails, Laravel jQuery, and this kind of old, but you know, like React, VJS, and all these things. And then now we're going to the machine learning code where we just talk with the AI interface and it does it for us. So we're getting to the cold, close and close to human language coding where human just uses our natural language to create software apps. And when that happens, everything that I learned and dedicated towards computer programming is kind of going off speed and that'll make me sad because I like Ember Green stuff. So I'm going to go with math, but it's also more difficult because um, with the programming tutorials, I've noticed that if you just create um, a, a, a updated programming, um, if you create a video just showing people how it's done and it's really easy, it's you get a lot of views because it's up to date. Whereas if you want to be a math YouTuber, which is kind of thinking of trying to do, you have to be really good at your communication skills because everybody does math. There's for everyone, um, uh, like recent um, computer programmer out there that's making YouTube videos, there's like a hundred mathematicians making really low quality math videos. And math qualities are amazing, but the competition is really high and I really need to up my communication game. So there's different things. If you wanna get more easy views and your passion lies in computer programming or web development, front-end web, front web development, or all these things, or back-end web development, or UI design, you can do it and make it up-to-date uh, with with uh, AI, I'm sorry, with, uh, with um, with math, I really have to work on my ideas. It's not just about being good at math, because there's a lot of math mathematicians who are not good at YouTube. I've seen them because I watch a lot of videos, um, uh, and uh, I don't want to be like them. I just gotta improve a little bit. So work with me. And number two, this is kind of personal. It's not really something that I want to tell you guys, but it's kind of part of my server and so I have to tell you guys. So I apologize in advance. But number two, it helps me get over depression by strengthening my emotional balance, and it helps me look through my past. Um, I'm getting a lot better at it. Um, watching old, like I'm getting, I watching math videos and reorganizing, reframing this so that my past languages that I wasn't, that I have memories connected to depression, the language depression, depression language or whatever I call it. Um, it was, uh, it was really difficult for me to go through these things, and I want to improve more so that I can watch old movies again. I can watch old YouTube videos in because like I, I still have a tendency to to avoid old content because it triggers my depression. But at least to math, I'm doing it in a positive avenue first. And then it's actually giving me confidence to look at other YouTube videos too that 
that if you by the way i've suffered 23 years of panic attacks you don't really get a chance to develop a positive mindset and and i had like a uh, almost eight and a half years where i was a bisc of mute i wasn't able to talk at all um and you know you, you, and and when you're barely alive like that you tend to emanate people want to move away from you and all the languages that i hear triggers that that feeling of people don't want me at that time and i have to kind of reframe that so that's kind of what i'm going through so it helps me strengthen myself i'm sorry to bring the mood down but i'm trying to like be a better person i'm trying to be emotionally more intelligent so i'm reframing it and my, my i used to i why well, i got i used to take a calculus when i was in high school and i not uh, no i didn't take i skipped calculus but i took to the advanced um level math like i skipped the grade ahead and did math um uh compared to my grade level on um, anyways i and i even though i was suffering through panic attacks i still just technically learned numbers as a nerd who has a lot of technical knowledge but no emotional knowledge this time around when i'm learning math i'm trying to regain that emotional strength combined with numbers numbers like hey look look four is for people of color two is for 21 south korea seven lucky blonde whatever you want to call it um eight asian five everybody five ten out of ten ten is ten out of ten you know that's how this works and you know this is just english in different languages the numbers mean different things i don't know enough i just know english but i'm learning french i know a little bit of korean i'm learning different languages right now just for fun of it and english is the dominant language so just just get used to it so all these numbers like three tree all these word rhymes like if you can understand the emotional aspect of of these numbers then you can be an amazing uh pedagogy amazing in pedagogy i think pedagogy is a term i think for, for the p- 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 giving lectures and you know helping kids with academic students with academics right so you have to understand that to be a good teacher or professor or lecturer or a tutor or whatever to call it um you have to understand the emotion so that you don't just teach people numbers but you get the most social value P- people don't associate social aspect with math but math is very social because humans do math if robots did math they won't be social at all it will different type of social it'll be much more complex social but it would be non-human social so we want to be able to relate to it but as a human being doing math as a mathematician, I have to connect an emotion with people and bring people up and so that they can improve a lot and, and really get good at math, not just the numbers, but the social causes that we can incorporate through math. Building that emotional connection to numbers that really generate society to create amazing communities and civilizations and cities and nations and everything and have politics involved, that's a true mathematician, right? So that's how we go. Number three, increasing my problem solving skills. I, I'm learning languages uh, and socializing a lot online talking a lot not just chatting on uh, typing but chatting video chatting a lot a lot of people on discord helps my brain i had eight and a half years of being mute and not moving around that made my brain atrophy a lot so i'm trying to increase my problem solving skills social problem solving skills math languages bilingual people have more gray matter so that's the one reason i think learning language is amazing i'm also trying to do really good at science a lot of problem solving skills like just traditional problem solving skills in mathematics physics chemistry even you know we'll move up there and I, i'm rich, i really want to study like biology and genetics cloning um genetically mod genetically modification uh genetic engineering tissue engineering uh, aging reversal these are topics that i really love in biology so i hopefully will have the time to study you know that's laying on that i but only math and maybe a little bit of physics in the future is something i want to get good at uh, i want to just i'm, I'm submitting about like an hour and a half watching um math videos per day on youtube i just watch the same one over and over again until i and then i go talk to people like triggers my depression i go talk to people in this core reframe it come back and watch the same video again and i'm watching videos about math for about an hour to hour and a half per day but the the time that i have to rest and recover from that right now it's like for every like one hour that i watch on youtube like or can academy of math or any math youtube depending on how severe it triggers my depression i have to like recover for like two or three hours so when i'm saying i'm studying about an hour a day i'm really studying math about three hours per day which is I know it's, it, it, it mean look i just have i just have more challenges and hurdles and things that i have to go through in life so if you're if you're healthy emotionally healthy and you're doing math at a fast level or at least an average pace you're blessed i have to work through a lot more so i love math but you're probably better than me at math so i'm just saying <laughs> if you if you don't have to go through where i do be blessed know that you're lucky and and use that to your advantage and really do good with math there's a lot of people who, who can use more positive connections with numbers help them out is what i'm saying <laughs> and number four finally if i do end up being good at it i can be a mathematician not i'm sorry i want to be a data scientist and have a tech startup and robot work in the ai and robotics field that's my dream job my dream passion and i have other passions too but my baseline dream job is being a tech startup in the ai and robotics field as a data scientist probably as the entry level but we'll see but to do that i have to do a lot of 
I have to be basically like almost like a uh, like a math minor level, like at least not, not. I don't have to be a necessarily math major level good, like bachelor level good, but I do have to have enough math to do like second or third year level math in university, and that's like that's like a math minor, right? So um, then I have to write the, the correct like statistics, uh, linear algebra, discrete uh, calculus three, multivariable calculus, and you know there's a few more like topology, discrete mathematics, but it really doesn't matter. I, I just have to finish calculus right now, just to just see I. I'm working on something and 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 just just developing a healthy relationship with numbers helps me in business too um and i really want to say hey you know what i just don't tell other people to do science i do it myself as well as i study math even though i suck at it i put the emotional value in it so that to show i show initiative i don't tell other people i walk my talk if i say science support and helps other people and i'm trying to use combined science and engineering technology to help create products for everyone else i even though i suck at it i i, I do it really hard um that's basically it um and uh you know just i just want to spread the positivity study math help those around you it, 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 there's so much things that that it'd be like archimedes archimedes um uh, who, uh i think he was the war guy i, I can't remember who was who was the guy there's a lot of mathematicians there's a lot of mathematicians and, and just pay respect tribute to the people who discovered math so we can do it isaac newton um I, I'm not very good on history, as you can probably tell. But just study math and and just contribute back to society and and try to do something that's practical. You know, I know there's like proof theory science that we are just discovering all these math problems that are unsolved. But I like to think think of the more practical things because if we can create AI, just to make intelligence go up by a thousand times, ten million times compared to what the current global civilization's collective uh, intelligence is. We can solve all those math problems in due time. So don't waste too much on the hard problems. Focus on the practical problems because technology is like you have to build a one layer at a time and that's the most cost effective way to do it. Always have curiosity, always explore, see what, see if there's alien life on other planets and stuff. Like I'll answer these questions that are amazing, but stick to practicality. We will get there in due time as intelligence goes up. And once we hit that mark where an AI is re replicating itself or evolving, at a much faster rate than any previous intelligent species on this planet has. All of the questions that we're at, trying to answer will be a lot more cost effective to answer by a long shot. So um, we we're, we're, look, uh, uh, technology develops when there's more intelligence. Once we have AI, it'll do the development for us. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, study math, study science, let's do business engineering, um, pay respect to your local entrepreneurs, they're making it work and creating amazing products, let's do business, and uh, signing out, love you guys.